Hi all, I am Shiba Gumbati, PhD student and Department of Liberal Arts, IIT Hyderabad. I am working under Dr. Marathi Chittam, Assistant Professor of Health and Medical Psychology. Here I am going to talk about Patients' Report of Diabetes Self-Management, a Meta-Ethnography Study. First of all, let me introduce what is self-management. Self-management refers to the individual's ability to perform certain behaviors in order to keep their illness under control and also to diminish or lessen the impact of illness. In specific to diabetes self-management, it refers to the way in which the patient adhere to a set of regimen including diet, exercise, medication and self-monitoring. Diabetes self-management is a complex phenomenon which is influenced by multi-psychosocial factors including patients' personal, social, cultural, environmental and financial aspects. In order to understand this existing complexity, we need to look into this context through qualitative perspective. Qualitative research helps us to understand how these determinants influence the way in which patients process the information and adhere to the prescribed regimen. Qualitative research also provides us an insight into the unexpected findings arised in the quantitative research. Now let's move on to the scientific technique which I have used to synthesize the qualitative findings. Here is the meta-ethnographic technique which was developed by Noblet and Hare in 1988. This method aimed to interpret and synthesize the findings of several qualitative research which are focused on a particular phenomenon. In our research, we had focused on exploring the patient's experiences pertaining to diabetes self-management. So for this purpose of synthesizing the qualitative studies which had focused on diabetes self-management, this meta-ethnographic technique was used. This technique follows the seven steps which are highlighted here. In the subsequent slides, I will explain the steps in detail. Before moving into the explanation of methodology, I would like to throw light on the use of meta-ethnography in health domain. These are all some of the research works where they had used meta-ethnography technique in order to understand the experiences of patients pertaining to their illness and management. With reference to diabetes self-management, a meta-ethnography study conducted by Wormer et al. in 2006 had focused on exploring the barriers pertaining to diabetes self-management among type 2 diabetes patients in Europe. This study highlighted two major key factors including their health belief and patient-physician relationship. The former represents the patient's knowledge pertaining to diabetes, their perception about cause of illness and severity or consequences of illness. The latter represents the patient-physician communication the way in which the patient was received, informed and motivated by the physician and time spent by physician. This study also highlights two major limitations. At first it talks about it failed to indicate the relationship exists between patients and caregivers. Here the caregivers includes the family member including their spouse or children. As we all know, diabetes is a chronic illness and patients need to manage their illness on a day-to-day -day basis. For this purpose, they need a constant support from the surroundings. But this study did not explore the patient-caregiver relationship which is considered to be crucial for the successful self-management. This study also focused only on a particular population and thereby la lacking its power of generalization. Till now we look into why I have chosen qualitative research and the use of meta-ethnographic technique in order to synthesize the findings of the qualitative research. Now let's move on to the aim of this current research. This study aims to synthesize the findings of several qualitative research which focus on 
exploring the experiences of patients pertaining to their diabetes self management process now let's look into these seven sequential steps of meta ethnography which we need to follow in order to arrive at final synthesis now let's take few seconds to read out these steps okay now let's move on to the steps in detail here is the first step getting started in this step we frame a specific research idea which the researcher is instead interested in this particular study focus on exploring the experiences of patients pertain to their diabetes self management process so that we arrived at a specific research question which is focusing on synthesizing the findings of several qualitative research pertaining to the particular phenomenon once the specific idea had been framed our next step is to identify a set of potentially relevant qualitative research works which are in specific to that context here are the set of key terms which have been used in order to arrive at a identify a potentially relevant qualitative research works pertain to this diabetes self management process let's take few seconds to read out these key terms yeah now let's move on to the next slide these are the five databases which we looked into in order to arrive at the qualitative research works which have been carried out pertain in pertain specific to this area so this initially we arrived at 64 research papers and later on these 64 research works have been scrutinized against caps quality criteria and finally we arrived at a set of 24 studies which have been taken into consideration for further synthesis in the subsequent slides i will explain about the caps quality criteria which we have used step 3 reading the studies in this step we carefully identify the concepts the research design and the method of each study the caps quality criteria that is the critical appraisal skill program had been used in this step in order to arrive at the relevant 24 papers pertain to this context these are all the 10 criteria of critical appraisal skill program this criteria focus on evaluating the study's methodology including the research design the sampling technique the data collection technique and data analysis and interpretation technique this criteria have been used in order to arrive at a highly relevant set of research works the study had used this 10 criteria and evaluated the total 64 studies and finally arrived at the 24 highly relevant qualitative research works which have been taken into consideration for further synthesis this flowchart represents the scientific way through which we identify the final set of 24 relevant papers here is the fourth step determining how the studies are relating to one another in this step we carefully identify the concepts and following that we present them in a table later we read the concepts of each study one by one and trying to find out the relationship which exists between these 24 studies in this step we also arrive at first order and second order interpretation which have been taken into consideration for final synthesis what is first order and second order interpretations first order interpretation represents the participants here the patients their experiences and reflection over diabetes self management so which is usually categorized under the findings of each study the second order interpretation 
represents the author's own reflection on the participant's reflection or experiences so where they interpret the way in which the patients had experienced or reflected over diabetes self management both first order and second order interpretations had taken into account in order to arrive at third order interpretation so so here i am presenting a sample data in order to provide a clear cut and idea about first order and second order interpretation following that we move on to the fifth step translating studies into one another in this step we compare the first order and second order interpretation of each study with one another in order to identify the nature of translation at first we compare the first order and second order interpretation of first study with the second one and we arrive at a synthesized data of that comparison later we compare that synthesized data with the third study and so on in this current study we have identified the existence of reciprocal translation which means the findings of each study are complementing one another next we move on to the sixth step synthesizing the translations in this step we arrive at third order interpretation by synthesizing the first order and second order interpretation of each study this third order interpretation represents the interpretation of the researcher who synthesized the findings here is the sample data which represents the third order interpretation to give an clear cut idea about how we have arrived at first order second order and third order interpretation which is considered to be the findings of this current study now let's move on to the final step expressing the synthesis in this step the synthesized data was presented and discussed in a particular format in the current study we have chosen the thematic format and each theme had been discussed with the supportive relevant quotes these are all the seven key findings of this current research first illness knowledge and treatment awareness second illness belief third strategies used by the patients in order to adhere to a set of regimen fourth psychological determinants fifth socio cultural determinants sixth patient physician relationship and seventh other determinants at first the illness knowledge and treatment awareness which indicates the significant role played by the knowledge in the process of diabetes self management secondly illness belief which represents the way in which the patient perceive their illness thirdly the strategies used for adherence which in which tells us about the different strategies which the patient had used in order to overcome their day to day various when respect to their diabetes self management process fourth psychological determinant which includes lack of motivation and external locus of control the former explains the patient's reluctance towards adherence due to lack of motivation and the latter explains the patient's perceived responsibility or control over their illness which influences the diabetes management process this theme explains the role of socio cultural factors with specific reference to diabetes self management process particularly with reference to familial responsibility cultural expectation and social support this indicate the way in which the individual is bounded within the social structure and how that integration affects the process of self management and how that prohibits or reduce their level of adherence towards the prescribed regimen sixth patient physician relationship which represents the way in which the patient was received informed and motivated by the physician this quote indicates that the scaring technique which was used by the physician demotivated the patient and thereby led to poor treatment adherence seventh other determinants which includes environmental determinant 
and financial constraint. The former represents the poor climatic condition associated with exercise adherence and the latter denotes the financial constraint led to poor treatment adherence. Here I am presenting some of the implications of the current findings. At first, it talks about the role of self-efficacy, health education and motivation with reference to diabetes self-management process. Secondly, it insists upon understanding how the negative perception of, of the patients with reference to their diabetes and their experience in relation to cultural expectation affect their adherence process. And la finally, it insists upon un understanding the critical role played by the caregivers and physician. The future study should take these factors into consideration while developing an intervention and also it is important to understand the process of diabetes self-management from a multi-stakeholder perspective that includes patients, physicians and caregivers. Thank you all for listening to my presentation and please feel free to contact me if you have any queries or comments. Have a nice day. Bye.